The Soka series came out months ago, but since it was airing during the strike, I didn't publicly voice any of my thoughts. I have been wanting to discuss an issue I had with my favorite character, Sabine Wren, and her arc in the series. Sabine Wren is a Mandalorian artist and explosive expert and fighter and many things who was first introduced to Star Wars Rebels. Sabine is known for her skills in combat, particularly with her proficiency in using various weapons like the Darksaber and speaking multiple languages. Throughout Rebels, Sabine undergoes a significant character development from ages 16 to 21, grappling with her Mandalorian heritage and her abandonment issues. By the end of the series, she is reunited with her Mandalorian family and dedicates herself completely to the Rebel Alliance and her Rebel family. Ten years later, when Sabine Wren first appears in the Soka series, we see a grown woman clinging to her past. She resides in Ezra's old tower, constantly replying his message from the Rebel finale. The revelation she lost her entire Mandalorian family and the Night of a Thousand Tears adds a layer of tragedy to her character. Despite being in her 30s, Sabine exhibits behavior reminiscent of her teenage rebel self, playing loud music, defying authority figures, and neglecting some of her duties. This betrayal of Sabine as someone who hasn't moved on from her rebellious and impulsive teenage years adds an interesting and realistic dynamic to her character. Experienced traumatic events like a galactic war, can have a profound impact on both your body and mind, leaving enduring effects on your mood, relationships, and self-perception, even after the trauma has concluded. When trauma hinders the development of complete emotional maturity, it is referred to as arrested psychological development. This occurs when trauma essentially freezes your emotional responses, anchoring them to the age at which you encountered the first traumatic experience. After Ahsoka gives Sabine new hope and her close call dueling Shen Hati, Sabine seems to have regained her focus, determination, and maturity we saw in the last seasons of Rebels. However, let's go to part four, Fallen Jedi of the Ahsoka series. Sabine has the map to the other universe where she believes Ezra is. But also, Grand Admiral Thrawn is also there. She knows, like everyone else, if Thrawn returns to her galaxy, he will wage war throughout the stars. He is, after all, the heir of the Empire. Sabine has a choice. Destroy the map, her only way of finding Ezra, or give it to Balin Skull, the former Jedi-turned-mercenary. Sabine, who has lost her entire Mandalorian family, Planet and believed she just lost her Jedi Master Ahsoka makes a significant mistake by giving the map to the bad guys. She is driven by a selfish desire to find Ezra her friend and fulfill a promise she made years ago. Despite being a questionable move, I actually love that she did something unexpected and very human. It adds depth to her character and is understandable. After everything lost, she just wants to get one thing back. It's a very human thing to prioritize someone you love, even if it means causing chaos in the galaxy. That selfish choice made by a hero for personal reasons is a refreshing angle to see in Star Wars and a good lesson for kids that even good people make mistakes. I thought the lesson would continue with Sabine redeeming herself later in the story, maybe by confronting Thrawn or making a selfish choice. When it comes to the ending, Sabine faces a crucial decision between her master Ahsoka and her friend Ezra. Ezra's on Thrawn's ship, going back to their galaxy, while Ahsoka is battling stormtrooper zombies and Morgan alone. Sabine chooses Ahsoka, and it is portrayed as a heroic, selfless moment for her. However, I can argue it's actually the most selfish choice she could have made. Let me explain. Sabine caused the mess in the first place. 
she should have gone back to her universe with Ezra to clean it up. However, now that duty lies with Ezra again. He already sacrificed years away from his found family to keep Thrawn away from their universe. By choosing Ahsoka, Sabine wins both ways. Ezra gets to go home, and Ahsoka survives. Both members of her family get to live and be with their loved ones, or at least one of their loved ones. It would have been more dramatic for her to leave Ahsoka behind for the greater good. I think the writers missed an opportunity to explore a truly selfless decision. She knows Ezra will be able to hide out as an Imperial. He's done it for years. He'll just say that he's like Thrawn's nephew or the Emperor's nephew. And Hera, Zeb, and even Chopper will welcome him back with open arms. Ezra won't be alone anymore, even if he is without her. Ahsoka would have been completely alone. The only way I can see this choice being considered selfless is if Sabine and Ezra were in a romantic relationship. Yes, platonic relationships can be very strong, but it's hard to portray on screen. If they were together, then the story would have had more depth. If Sabine had to choose between her love for Ezra and her loyalty to Ahsoka. But we know Star Wars doesn't like romance. As it stands, it feels like a choice between two loved ones, making it less impactful. Sabine is still impulsive, selfish, but now she has the force. Ahsoka could have been left without her friends. Both Balin and Shin Hati were on the planet, and it could have made an interesting story if they had to team up whether as reluctant allies or friends. For an example of a selfless sacrifice in Star Wars, it's done right. I'm going to turn to my Space Waffle co-host, Arzu, to talk about the Obi-Wan Kenobi series. A really good example of selfless sacrifice in Star Wars is Obi-Wan's arc in the Obi-Wan Kenobi series. And I know, I know this one sometimes gets some flack for its writing, emphasis on some things over others, whatever but the arc that obi-wan himself has is such a good distillation of a character arc especially as it comes to this topic of selfless sacrifice because when we first see him at the beginning of the series he is broody he's angry he's hurt he's upset he's still lingering in the past he is still living that fight on mustafar he is still blaming himself for everything that went wrong for whatever he could have done differently to save Anakin from he thinks dying so he thinks Anakin's dead and he thinks it's his fault and he is living with that guilt so every decision he makes in terms of staying on Tatooine in terms of watching Luke is it's not as selfless I think as he thinks it is he thinks he's there to watch Anakin's son but really he's there to kind of soothe his own guilt and then obviously he goes on this arc with Leia and they go on this adventure and Bale has to remind him that Leia is just as important as Luke is. And it shakes him out of this 10-year funk he's been in. And he's like, right, Anakin had two children. So even the decision to go off and save Leia, yeah, it's the right thing to do because this kid's been kidnapped. But part of it is still motivated by his guilt. So that's what prompts him to make that choice. And then as they they go on this journey, once Leia's in a safe place, she's with the she's with the rebels. He doesn't have to worry about her anymore. By this point, he's already faced Vader a couple times or seen him a couple times. And he is now very aware of what's happened to Anakin Skywalker. So his selfless choice, his selfless sacrifice is maybe not to the best benefit of the galaxy is to just leave, to leave Vader and to walk away during that final fight. And he's not trying to fix him and he's not trying to bring him back. And he doesn't want soothing for his guilt anymore. Now he is properly making choices for the good of Anakin's children. If he dies in that spot, that's it. He doesn't know if Leia's getting home. He doesn't know what's happening to Luke, but he's finally making a choice motivated by those kids and not by his own need to like keep beating himself up over a fight 10 years ago. So they have their fight. Obi-Wan walks away and he knows Anakin's still alive because Anakin's like screaming after him, but he decides to just leave it. He is severing the ties with 
that relationship, or at least putting it on the back burner. He is severing his ties with his guilt. He is moving on and making, it, it could feel like a selfish choice in that he is choosing to not live with his own guilt, but it's the most selfless thing he's done because he's finally putting the well-being of other people ahead of his need to beat himself up over his own guilt. It's still not the best decision. He still did make the choice to retire from public life and go live out in the desert with the ghost of Qui-Gon Jinn and just kind of prepare for the day that Luke or Leia might need him again and hope that that day never comes. But it's it's a better choice. It's a more selfless choice than what he was doing before. And ultimately we see that choice it winds up spawning the original trilogy because him being there and kind of taking Luke on that call to adventure and to Alderaan. And that's where the whole thing really kicks off. So we know that he doesn't, but, but Obi-Wan's arc in the Obi-Wan Kenobi series is an example of this selfless choice and was really, really well done. Additionally, the thematic depth of Ahsoka compared to Rebels leaves me wanting more, especially considering Ahsoka assumes knowledge from Rebels without delving into certain characters' motivations. While Rebels was, yes, targeted for kids, the character arcs were clear, but also complex. Whether it was a season-long arc or just episodic stories, Sabine learned her lesson and grew throughout Rebels. In Ahsoka, she stayed stagnant. Hopefully, since we are getting season two of Ahsoka, we will see what she becomes. Overall, while the show has its fun and positive aspects, there's room for deeper exploration and more meaningful character arcs. The fantastic cast and exciting action shouldn't overshadow the potential for a more profound narrative. I enjoyed the series and I had fun watching it. Natasha and Iman were Sabine and Ezra brought to life. I am looking forward to the next season and to see what happens next to my favorite characters. So I want to know. What did you think of Sabine and the Ahsoka series? Do you agree with me? Do you disagree? Do you think her choice was selfless? Let me know in the comments and may the waffles be with you.